there and welcome to Tone Motion. Today we're going to make a new character for the Diva series. A stop motion animation series you can watch on YouTube, where I animate all the dolls I make on this channel. Links are in the description box. The character we are going to make today is an elderly sloth and secretary to Harris. We're going for the three-toed slot for the design of True Spilosa. And you know what? It's the spooky season. So let's also make Truce's ancestor, Agatha Pilosa, the mysterious medicine woman. So let's begin. If you saw the slot in my previous repaint video, then you found the hint. And if you saw the two wall figures, then you found the hint for the two new supporter exclusive repaint videos, Leilu Lupus and Lowell Folk, which are now available. This video will also contain a hint for the next repaint video. So good luck finding the hint! For this repaint, we're going to use this soccer player made to move Barbie. Yeah, the feet are really wobbly and need to be replaced with something stronger. Luckily, I have a spare doll body box. Yeah, it's weird but very common among doll customizers. Just like the harvesting of ears. Although, I have to point out, slots do have human-like ears. But they're so well hidden, we are going for an earless approach. By the way, I'm using an Ever After High doll head to mimic the round shape of a slot. But to use this head for your repaint, we first have to remove the factory painted face with pure acetone. And now for the big switch. By filling a mug with hot water, we can make the final of the head soft and easy to remove from the neck pack without breaking it. Thanks Barbie, but we only need your body. Speaking of the body, it's going to get a lot of body modifications. The characters I make for my stop motion series are human first, but have animal features. And depending on the age, the more animal features they have. Looking at a slot skeleton, it looks like we have to shorten the legs to make the arms look longer. Also, we're going to shorten the rump to make an elderly woman's body. Our slot has the age of 67 after all. Oh, but I did forgot to shorten the fingers. I need the base to make the long claws. Now we can reconstruct the body with sticks, wire and glue. The legs go, well, very easy. But the torso area needs a bit more help. For this we're going to use Friendly Form, also known as Temple Morph Plastic. To use Friendly Form, you can pour it in hot boiling water. This will make it clear, soft and ready to use. Sculpt it in place and wait for it to get hard and white again.
With a pin tool, we make small holes in the hand base and place wires into the holes. For the two-part epoxy glue, we glue all the loose attachments to each other. And now we can give the body, well, more body with epoxy sculpt. We fill in the leg area, the stomach, bosom and claws. After a day, the epoxy sculpt is dry and hard. Good enough for us to send it down for a better transition from plastic to epoxy. I like to begin with a rougher texture sandpaper and go lower and lower until I finish the sanding process with a sanding block. Great, the doll's all smooth. And ready to get some color. The color we're going to mix ourselves. Now we can paint the body two times. And also the scalp of the head. We seal in the body paint with two layers of matte varnish. And we use two layers of high gloss varnish for the claws. And to seal in the paint on the head, we're going to use fabric glue. This will make the reroute a bit easier later on. You probably haven't noticed it, like I did. But slots do have a tail. And we are going to make ours of yarn and craft foam. Here we go. Ooh, let's also put some flock on our hands for a more realistic slot claw. Yeah, that looks much better! Okay, let's continue with the hat. Sadly, I was only able to find grey nylon hair. And not saran. Yeah, I prefer to work with saran doll hair. Because it has a more natural texture and it's way easier to style. So let's hope the nylon hair won't give us too much trouble. To reroute a doll, we use a reroute tool, which is a needle upside down with the eye cut on an angle, and which we place in a holder. We take a strand of hair, slide it over the needle, and push it into the final head. Because I'm going for a bun hairstyle, we only have to do a few ropes, and not the entire head, which you can still do if you like. But to make a bun, it's way easier to have thin doll hair. Okay, two small strands at the temple, and now we can secure the doll hair from the inside with a universal glue. After the glue is dry, we can prepare the side curls and now we can pour hot boiling water over the hair. This will set the doll hair in style. For the next step, we need to place the head back on the body. And to make this process a bit easier, we use a hot glue gun to soften the neck opening. Here we go!
And now we can give her animal face features. Which will be a big nose. After a day, we can use the pre-made mixed paint to match her head with her body. When that's dry, we can give Truce more slot features. Like the black eye markings. To hide the brush strokes, we seal on the face with a layer of matte varnish. With a layer of sealing dry, we can give it some blushing and shading. And then we can give it a layer of Mr. Super Clear, which will give the doll face the perfect texture for a repaint. I do have to say, repainting an older character is very satisfying. Because most doll repaints are usually young teenage girls. But I really like to make dolls from different age groups, gender and body types. It really keeps doll repainting exciting and challenging. And now that I'm shading the eyes with pen pastels, let's enter the question of the day. How long does it take to film, photograph and edit an episode of the TV series? Um, that really depends on what will happen in an episode, how many locations or how big the cast will be. For example, the big remake episode, that was over 36 minutes long, had a lot of characters and locations and took me 2 months in total to complete. But usually it takes me around 2 weeks to make a normal Divas episode. This includes the storyboard, script, voice acting, stop motion animation and editing. Do you have a question of the day? Please leave your questions in the comment section and maybe I will answer it in the next repaint video. Back to the repaint. After another spray of Mr. Super Clear, we can free our slot's hair and give it a final hairstyle. Like I mentioned earlier, I really wish I could find grey saran hair. Because rolling up nylon hair in a bun is really tricky. I used a lot of strong gel and in the end I even had to use real glue. But I think I managed to give her a bun, even with nylon hair. Great outfit time! Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we are going to make two characters using the same doll. The first one is Truus, the sleepy secretary, who is taking everything very slow until she can retire. Which drives Harris nuts. She's getting a comfy sweater and a pencil skirt. Well, the pencil skirt I was making looked more like a potato bag, so I switched it to a pencil skirt I already owned. And you know what, I also borrowed this jacket for my silkstone barbie. The shoes will be of course flats, which I colored black with a permanent marker. The next outfit will be for Agatha. Truce's ancestor. A wise old medicine woman who lived in the same age as the Deus and was good friends with Morpheo. I found this dress on the flea market and as you can see it has a lot of stains. I did try to get them out but yeah they're permanent. <laughs> but I think it's okay for this character. She lived in the 14th century and she grew her own spices. And now that we know she grew her own spices and lived in a forest, let's give her a belt with some tools. Which we are going to steal from this unused outfit. And let's add some remands from my collection. 
Yeah, that looks great! For our shoes, we're going to use these black boots. But I had to make a slit in the back, so she can take them off easily. These pantyhose are from an OMG doll. And we also made a necklace and hairpin. Which can become family heirlooms in the Pilosa family. Great, we got our two outfits. Now she only needs some shine on her nose and lips. And the doll is done. Hmm. Looking at the cards, you already encountered the high priestess and the magician. But if we are looking into your future, you will also meet the emperor, the hermit, the hanged man, and eventually death. But oh, don't worry my dear, if things won't work out for you, you can always join me and my friends. <laughs> I'm very happy how our sleepy slot turned out. It's fun how you can use one doll to make two characters. Oh, and if you haven't yet, you should really check out the Diva series. Although I love to repaint dolls, I'm actually a professional stop motion animator. And animating these dolls with a story really makes these characters come to life. All the episodes are re-uploaded to their own channel, with a new episode every Friday. But for those who are all caught up and really want to know how the story continues, you can watch early access episodes on Patreon and YouTube memberships every month. And speaking of Patreon and YouTube memberships, there are two new exclusive repaint videos available. Leilu Lupus and Lowell Falk. And Kenneth got a brand new face. So that means three new repaints. But that's not all. If you're a doll repainter yourself and you like a challenge, beginning November 1st, you can join the exclusive 3rd edition of the Divas Collab. For more information, see the links below. But before I go, I would love to thank my lovely patrons of honor. Chelsea Panda Monkey, Manning Dreams, Cat Vanity, Kei Namaru, Pichadi Puff, Jennifer Swedberg, and everyone else on Patreon and YouTube membership. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much guys. You make every video here on YouTube possible. Thank you for watching. Have a happy and a little bit scary Halloween. And I will see you in the next repaint video. Bye! <laughs>